So, Pop, you want to tell him what the this or that is and, uh, and, and roll with that, and we'll, we'll call it done after that? Yeah, we do a thing called this or that. <clears throat> All bands seem to have fun with it. It's no wrong answer. I just give you a choice and you pick or give you two choice, two things to pick from and you just pick whichever one you think is better. And like okay. I said, there's no wrong answer. I'm nervous. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I put this one down first because the first time I met you, I, um, I said, uh, you said you were Malcolm. I said, is that Malcolm as in Malcolm Young? And you're like, most definitely. So, I you know, that. Young, very... I've always thought very underrated rhythm guitarist. You well, know, I just always thought he was better than him. Well, it's kind of funny because I definitely, you know, rest in peace to Malcolm Young, but I definitely share a uh, a common thread with him, I guess, uh, with my approach. But he was always kind of guitar-wise the heartbeat of ACDC. Yeah. And he was the kind of guy that, you know, he wasn't super flashy, but he – you know, had a right hand that was like a, like a freight train. And I definitely would consider Malcolm Young an influence. Angus Young too. I mean, I play in SG mainly, but I would say as I get older, Malcolm Young is probably more of an influence on my playing nowadays than Angus is, you know, it's, you start playing guitar and it's like, Oh, it's flashy and fast licks, but you get into playing in a band and and the role that I kind of do in the band, depending on the song is that, you know, I'm, I'm driving the the rhythm of, of at least the guitar frequencies. I really enjoy that. So, yeah, uh, big, big fan of Malcolm Young. Well, even when I die, I'm kind of like you. I'm not looking at it because I don't play. But even as a, when you dive into ACDC's music and, you know, you see all this stuff live and I'm kind of like you. Angus is what drawed me in. But then Malcolm's yeah. what kept me there. I, 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 yeah. I, and, whether a, you know it or, and whether you know it or not, he's what kept you there because he was he – was, he was a real driving force behind that band, not only with the songwriting and the, and the chord progressions that he did, but, you know, without his rhythm, you know, in, in their heyday and uh, live and on the record, you, if it wasn't there, you'd really be missing it. Yeah. And so that, that was my first question, but I think you've done answered that one. I was going to say Malcolm Young or Angus Young. I had to go with Malcolm on that. I mean, we share the same name. <laughs> all right that's that's kind of where I, I was at when i wrote that question but i was i wanted to hear it out of your own voice so all right so um and i know y'all listen you can talk yourself texas grunge um as far as grunge scene are you soundgarden or alice in chains i'm gonna have to go with soundgarden on that but man i do love alice in chains soundgarden is one of my favorite bands ever uh i have to i have to go with them uh you know and it's tough because Alice in Chains, I, you know, just because we're playing this or that, I'm gonna pick Soundgarden. But I don't, I don't know that I could, I could ever really pick between them if I could only listen to one or the other. But if I had to, I, I would go with Soundgarden. Uh, from the era, I'll even go back to Loud Love, that record, all the way through Down on the Upside, even King Animal. You know, the last uh, studio record that they put out, I love every song on those records, you know, some of the earlier stuff in their, in their early days. Uh, I definitely like a good portion of it, but, but bad motor finger, super unknown down the upside. I can put those albums on shuffle, listen to a neighbor song. And I know them too. I love their music. Love the music. Yeah. I think I would swing more Alice chains, but that's just me. And um, I don't blame you. They're pretty damn good too. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, it's like picking a favorite kid, you know, sometimes. So. Yeah, that, that's um cool. let's go with Ozzy or Black Sabbath. I guess as far as like do you like Ozzy solo stuff better or Ozzy with Black Sabbath better? Uh in in that regard, I probably like Aussie solo stuff better, but if we're talking about just band to band, I'm going to go with Black Sabbath. To me, Black Sabbath is the first, in my mind, first official metal band. Yeah. Uh, you can you can say, well, what about this band or what about that band? They 
everything culminated to them being a metal band. Like that's yeah. when I think of the first metal band, the original metal band, heavy, dark, it's Sabbath. So if I had to pick band to band, I'm going to go with Sabbath. Love Tony Iommi's playing, uh, you know, Bill Ward, Geezer Butler, all phenomenal in their own right. <clears throat> of course, Ozzy. But if I'm going with which music do I like better, just respectfully from Ozzy, I'll probably solo stuff. I love especially especially Jakey Lee and, and Zach, Zach Wild era. Not that I'm not a Randy Rhodes fan. I think he was a phenomenal guitar player. Yeah. But – my my favorite stuff is uh is probably Zach Wild era. I, I yeah, love that's, that's me. He's he's awesome. I mean, I catch some grief because I'm kind of like you. I mean, I love No Rest for the Wicked and No More Tears. And I mean, and we we've met Zach. Zach is class act himself. So, all right. So we'll go with um. What what what? Speak of Randy. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say real quick before we move on with that. What what guitar player played on Shot in the Dark? Was that J.K. Lee? Because that's probably my yeah. favorite. That's probably my favorite Ozzy song. J, that was J.K. Lee? Yeah. So I really like him too. But anyways, move, move along. I heard a cool version, speaking of Shot in the Dark, Corey Taylor just done it on one of his albums, and I was like, damn, that's really? pretty good. I'd check that out. That's so definitely you know, my favorite like, Ozzy song. But um, so – you used to talk about Randy Rhodes. Here's a tough one. Eddie Van Halen or Randy Rhodes? I got to go with Eddie Van Halen on that one. I think he is one of the last true innovators of the electric guitar. Uh, there's probably been a couple since. <clears throat> you can take your pick. Everybody has their opinions. But I got to go with Eddie Van Halen. Uh, I got a, I got a picture of him hanging on the wall on the other, other side of the room. But, uh, man, what a, what a phenomenal player. The things that he did, the sounds that he got. And, you know, he to me, there's kind of like Hendrix. Hendrix came out, and everybody wanted to be like Hendrix, and everybody rushed out to, to get that sound. To me, the next guy was Eddie Van Halen as far as that yeah. pure phenomenon. Everybody wanted to be Eddie Van Halen, still to this yeah. day. Even. Oh, everybody hey. went and got a super strat and put a humbucker in the bridge, and everybody was two-hand tapping. Uh, I mean, he, he was the guy of the – of course, you know, Van Halen one, I guess, came out what seventy seven, seventy eight, but you know, through the eighties. Oh, was... he created a whole genre of guitarists. Absolutely, absolutely. That that is still being uh, imitated to this day. Yeah. So that's that's an easy one for me. No disrespect to Randy Rhodes, he was a legend in his own right. Yeah. But for for my money, I'm going with E B H. Well, like I said, ain't no wrong answer. So, um, no. let's go with <laughs> Foo Fighters or Nirvana. Damn, man. You really got some tough ones on this one. I want to have to go with Nirvana on that one. And it's funny because I didn't really, I didn't really wasn't into Nirvana when I was, you know, discovering and listening to rock music at, when I was younger. But as I got older, I really appreciated the simplicity of the, of the music. Uh, to me, they're like a, uh, I think they shared some common threads with the Beatles, as crazy as that sounds. The, sim the simple chord progressions for the most part, but Kurt Cobain was really good with melodies. Uh, but I love the Foo Fighters, too. They have an insane catalog and body of work. And uh, I have seen them live once, and they they were phenomenal. But if I had to pick, I'm going to go with Nirvana just because I love uh, Nevermind In Utero, spe specifically those two records I think are, are awesome. All right, now I've got two here left. I just noticed I got the red on the – battery did but anyway um, okay hailstorm are pretty reckless hailstorm are pretty reckless uh, i've seen both of them live uh i'm gonna have to go with hailstorm on that one uh, i did see pretty reckless live at a festival one time and they they were really great really great live uh definitely a fan of their music both both bands but i'm gonna go with hailstorm uh i like joe joe hottinger i think is how you say his last name he's a great guitar player Actually got to talk to his guitar tech for like 30, 45 minutes. We played a festival with Hailstorm, uh, Blue Ridge Rock Fest, I believe. And uh, he actually, if I remember correctly, he actually has a gold SG like mine. But you look at you look at Joe's guitar vault, and it is nothing but Gibsons. There ain't a Fender, Gretsch, there ain't nothing. I mean, it's nothing but Gibsons. So I was just like, and his guitar tech, you know, they we were up pretty early for the day. 
and and uh, and he come over and oh, man. So I got to got to check out his guitar. He's got quite the action. Yeah, I just um checked out this stuff with Lizzie Hale. She just did the Skid Row gig, and Joel played yeah, on that. Youth Gone Wild, I think. And yeah, he yeah, he sounded, sounded great awesome. on that stuff. They 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 both. Oh yeah, I I think she was a cool cool fit for for those. Yeah, I think she definitely. Does this. No, yeah. And um, last one, I'm oh, as everybody knows, to watch the show, I'm a huge Motley Crue fan. Um, Home Sweet Home or Kickstart My Heart. Um, Kickstart My Heart. That's not a kicks ass. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I I'm I'm a big Motley Crue fan too, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you something to end on here that might be a real real hot take. My favorite Motley Crue record ever is the one with John Cale. Yeah, ninety four. It's my favorite. Hands down. And I love and I love Vince Neil. Devil. I love Vince Neil. I love I love all all those records. You know, girls, girls, girls. Doctor Feel Good. You know, shout out the devil. Great stuff. But that record in ninety four with John Karabi. I love that record. And every time I show it to somebody, they're like, "Who's this?" I'm like, "That's Molly Crew." I think yeah. they really shot themselves in the foot on that one. By just saying it's self-titled Molly Crew, I don't know if they should have called it something else or what, but everybody skips over that record. And I think it is a phenomenal rock and roll record. Tommy Lee's best drumming in my oh, opinion yeah. was on that album. He just it up it's, on the drums. It's aged so well, I think. Yes. For an it, album still, that was- it still stands up to this day to me, you know, sonically, it, it sounds great and it's just it doesn't sound that really dated to me. Yeah, it sounds like, like if it came out, you know, this year, and with even more modern technology, I feel like it would still stand up. Hooligans Holiday, uh, Till Death, uh, Power to the Music. I mean, I love that record. I I I probably listened to that record probably like just like two months ago. Just put it on, let it let it run. That will always be my favorite Molly Crew record. <laughs> 